Now we need to talk about a big event of the news. Ted Kaczynski has died. And oh my God, at the same time, a beautiful picture of Evla Vlardin Gerbrook. She says it's time for another unvaccinated, chemical sunscreen free, seed oil disrespecting, sundress wearing, white girl summer. Holy shit, is Eva beautiful. I mean, it, it is unbelievable. And what's so unbelievable is that a woman of this beauty is basically the ideological child of Ted Kaczynski. Holy shit, Eva Vladar Gunbrook is really the most beautiful woman right now in the world because she combines the resistance against technology, technocracy, medical authoritarianism, and on top of it, she's a top true Stacy, 10 out of 10, guaranteed. But Ted Kaczynski is dead. And so she now, ha she now is uh, the leader, effectively the leader of the resistance against technology uh, on the public space. Ted Kaczynski was a genius, someone who wrote something that was extremely visionary. Uh, and it's so unfortunate that every time, instead of engaging really with his proper predictions about leftists and, and what the world would become, uh, people always feel the need to start with, oh yeah, but he was a horrible man because he sent those bombs. <clears throat> but here he is being extremely correct in predicting something like Twitter's trust and safety and how ultimately the leftists have no stable positions across history. They will just be against something as long as it's not controlled by them. And then they will be for it once they obtain control of it. Here he was writing, some leftists may seem to oppose technology, but they will oppose it only so long as they are outsiders and the technological system is controlled by non-leftists. If leftism ever becomes dominant in society so that the technological system becomes a tool in the hands of leftists, they will enthusiastically use it and promote its growth. In doing this, they will be repeating a pattern that leftism has shown again and again in the past. When the Bolsheviks in Russia were outsiders, they vigorously opposed censorship and the secret police. They advocated self-determination for ethnic minorities and so forth. But as soon as they came into power themselves, they imposed a tighter censorship and created a more ruthless secret police than any that had existed under the Tsars. And they oppressed ethnic minorities at least as much as the Tsar had done. In the United States, a couple of decades ago, when leftists were a minority in our universities, leftist professors were vigorous proponents of academic freedom. But today, in those of our universities where leftists have become dominant, they have shown themselves ready to take away from everyone else's academic freedom. This is political correctness. The same will happen with leftists and technology. They will use it to oppress everyone else if they ever get it under their own control. Wow. Stunning, accurate prediction. And his, uh, his manifesto is filled with proper insight into the increased dependence, the relationship of dependence that happens between societies and technology, and how technology is constantly making advances, and also a proper understanding of the leftist hypersocial mind, this kind of leftist who seeks approval, for whom, you know, social cancellation is the greatest possible harm that can come to someone. That is exactly the hell in which we live. The hell in which we live was properly predicted by a man who was, who was living in a much less advanced society. Like, much of these uh, things are not developed to the extent that we know today. 
but he could see it from just the tip of the iceberg. That's what makes him, in my view, uh, a really great thinker. The Una Bomber Manifesto, Ted Kaczynski's IQ 167, Harvard admission at 15 years old, youngest ever math professor at 25, money spent by the FBI to find him $50 million or more, the manifesto attacks modern civilization like nothing else before or since. 14 best insights from a philosopher theorist. Kaczynski lists the four bi big problems with modern civilization. Excessive density of population, isolation of men from nature, excessive rapidity of social change, the breakdown of natural small-scale communities such as the extended family, the village, the tribe. The big difference between the primitive civilization and our contemporary world is that before individuals had a lot of autonomy while the state was largely powerless to penetrate into the everyday life of people. Kaczynski argues that modern tech suddenly flips this balance. The balance of power between individuals and the larger system flipped when machines made much of human labor obsolete while simultaneously allowing big corp and big government to observe, track, exclude, social media bans, stripping away bank accounts, etc. Anyone being naughty. The Industrial Revolution has radically altered men's environment. It is to be expected that as technology is increasingly applied to the human body and mind, man himself will be altered as radically as his environment and way of life have been. With robots doing most work, will people find work in service industries? Kaczynski says no. People will reject the pointless busy work of driving each other around, making handicraft, waiting on tables, and embrace dangerous outlets, drugs, crime, cults, hate groups. Kaczynski against leftism. He states, Leftism is in the long run inconsistent with wild nature, with human freedom, and with the elimination of modern technology. Leftism is collectivist. It seeks to bind together the entire world, both nature and the human race, into a unified whole. Kaczynski devotes a large chunk of his manifesto attacking leftism. But in a powerful paragraph, he argues that the conservatives are fools too. They whine about the decay of traditional values, yet they enthusiastically support technological progress and economic growth. Apparently, it never occurs to them that you can't make rapid, drastic changes in the technology and the economy of a society without causing rapid changes in all other aspects of the society as well and that such rapid changes inevitably break down traditional values. The system knowingly destroys intimate bonds between people because it wants to soak up all the loyalty and energy of individuals of it for itself. Kaczynski writes, The technological society has to weaken family ties and local communities if it is to function efficiently. A democracy with advanced tech is less free than a dictatorship with primitive technology. A low-tech society has no rapid long-distance communications, no surveillance cameras, no dossier of information about the lives of average citizens. It is easier to evade control. Can we go back to small-scale small communities? Kaczynski says no, because we are enmeshed with and dependent on large-scale systems like public utilities, computer networks, highway systems, the mass communications media, and the modern healthcare system. Those were just some of the great insights of Ted Kaczynski. Ted Kaczynski also saw coming the problem of genetic modifications, 
the problem that we were headed toward a world where people, leftists in particular, would want to change the human body, change human evolution, and that we would become dependent on these technologies in the same way we became dependent on anything else that helped us. Um, so a great thinker who knew that the way in which the, these technologies set up in society is by, by rewarding, by rewarding those who use it, by excluding those who don't use it, and eventually you end up having an influence on human evolution, a selection system that favors only the growth and the expansion of the use of technology. <clears throat> so having realized all this dependency, he set up for a life in a cabin where he didn't want to be uh, helped, didn't want to uh, be in contact with much people and wanted to work on his own things and eventually started sending bombs to people who are involved in some kind of technological progress as a kind of way to stop the to seed chaos to stop the walk forward of society toward the inevitable technological end of it um just to show you the insight of this guy as a last comment on this um this guy was potentially the victim of this kind of tendency of psychiatry that we see today that's trying to convince people into uh, sex change surgeries and self-sterilization. And not only did he see the bullshit coming, but he was clever enough to test the system to see if he could mislead the psychiatrist into trying to change his sex. And he, he, he made an experimentation starting from an initial problem that he suffered from, which is that he was uh, self-exciting around the idea of being a woman, but in the way not so much uh, gender dysphoria leads you to do, but more on the side of self-stimulation and, and you know, erotically fantasizing about the body of a woman. You know how Jordan Peterson recently said that there are different types of trends. Some of them really feel that they are a woman. Some of them are just excited at the idea of touching the body of a woman. And therefore, if they were a woman, they could touch themselves. Amazingly, uh, Ted Kaczynski uh, was an autogenophilic fetishist for some instance, for some moment in his life. He says in the summer after, well, it's written that after, in the summer after his fourth year, he describes experiencing a period of several weeks where he was sexually excited nearly all the time and was fantasizing himself as a woman and being unable to obtain any sexual relief. He decided to make an effort to have a sex change operation. When he returned to the University of Michigan, he made an appointment to see a psychiatrist to be examined to determine if the sex change would be good for him. He claimed that by putting on an act, he could con the psychiatrist into thinking him suitable for a feminine role, even though his motive was exclusively erotic. As he was sitting in the waiting room, he turned completely against the idea of the operation and thus, when he saw the doctor, instead claimed that he was depressed about the possibility of being drafted. <clears throat> he describes the following. As I walked away from the building afterwards, I felt disgusted about what my uncontrolled sexual cravings had almost led me to do, and I felt humiliated, and I violently hated the psychiatrist. Just then, there came a major turning point in my life. Like a phoenix, I burst from the ashes of my despair to a glorious new hope. I thought I wanted to kill that psychiatrist because the future looked utterly empty to me. I felt I wouldn't care if I died. And so I said to myself, why not really kill the psychiatrist and anyone else whom I hate? Those were the words of Ted Kaczynski, perhaps starting to unlock in his mind 
the idea of perhaps killing people to change the world and unfortunately leading him to uh, this terroristic uh, activity that he's been engaged in. Well, in any case, leaving aside this, these all uh, terrorist question, and you know, because I don't know that there is much use to bomb just random people like like the guy at the computer store. <laughs> Ted Kaczynski bombed like a guy at a computer store who was just selling ridiculously weak computer by today's standard. And when you look back at this, it's like wow. In a way, you can grant to Ted that this was the technological progress at his time. But at the same time, would this bombing stop the walk forward of technology in any way? Uh, I don't think so. <clears throat> so Ted Kaczynski, a great mind, the kind of mind that is way too in advance of his time to be appreciated in his time, which is why, in a way, he had to engage in terrorism. It's because he, he knew that for leaving a permanent trace in history, at his time, he had to kill people so that his article would be published in a big enough journal so that it would resist the test of time and be present in hundreds of years after him. It is, it is unbelievable in terms of an explanation, but it, uh, this is what I conclude about Ted Kaczynski that ultimately he had to kill people to be existing forever. And the best, if, if you are this kind of person who, you know, cannot take the proper thoughts of someone because they're a criminal, if you are that, this kind of ad hominem mind that says, I'm not listening to anything he has to say because he's a criminal, let me tell you that if we create a society where the Ted Kaczynski's of this world, the brilliant minds of this world, can be heard forever, to the extent that what they say is useful, there will be much less violence. And DK Shadow goes ex exactly where I wanted to head this. He says, I was thinking the same thing. Too bad he didn't have ordinals. Exactly. As a man of today, I think a lot like Ted Kaczynski, and I agree with much of what I read in his manifesto. And when I had something to say about the world, I had uh, Jeff Bezos and his Amazon allowing me to self-publish a book. I had the audience willing to buy this book and make copies of it and keep copies of it everywhere in the world. And I had the Bitcoin blockchain that was allowing me to record a message forever to humanity. Uh, if you want to read it, it's on my website. Um, <clears throat> the Revolutionary Phenotype, Letters to Humans on Gene Editing, a letter recorded forever in the BTC blockchain. So in many ways, we have reached a world where I didn't have to bomb people to uh, be forever. And to those who reject minds like Ted Kaczynski, I say, you may be the cause of future violence.